All right, so uh, we are meeting uh, for the first time in this class. So we can begin with actually learning about what is approximately the area that we are going to be covering in this particular course, which is called the textured yarn technology. So in brief, if we look at uh, some of the things which you should be doing is principles of texturing and classification. So the whole course is called textured yarn technology. So what is texturing at least we should know and what kind of a processes which can be covered under this type of an heading or a whole uh, topic and therefore we will say that some classification also we need to do either to learn the various different processes. The other in this whole thing is there is one of the interesting technologies which is quite popular is called the false twist process and uh, what it means obviously is that uh, you actually twist but finally there is no twist and therefore uh, it is called false twist. So this is one process that we would like to talk about. We will talk about mechanisms related to this texturing in this process and properties structure property correlation, process parameters and so on and so forth. Within this uh, category you also have a draw texturing process where the filaments which are supposed to be textured are not fully drawn and so they are in a way undrawn or partially oriented yarns and so uh, what to do in such cases is what we call as a draw texturing the need, the fundamental aspects of this are going to be quite important as far as the learning component is concerned. The next in this line is uh, friction texturing where friction is a very important component in the whole process for twisting purposes. You can twist by many methods but this has become a popular technology and so why the friction texturing was needed, what developments have taken place within this and also the mechanics of friction texturing is what we would also be talking about. There will be many other things here also property, correlation, so on and so forth will come into picture but uh, mainly we will be talking about friction. Another uh, process which we believe now is commercially a successful process is called air jet texturing. So instead of using any other mechanics or mechanism like uh, thermal inputs, you will have air as a mechanism of deformation, entanglement and so you can use this process to produce products which we call as air jet textured yarns. In this uh, whole thing you also have filament yarns, spun yarns and so on and so forth. That is what we will also talk. Related to this topic also is a topic which we call as a air interlacement which is not exactly texturing but in multifilament processes particularly they started using this as one of the processes because it is an attachment which may be available on various machines and therefore you may like to learn something about this as well. There is one interesting process which we call as a bulk continuous filament yarn and this process is interesting in the sense that the speed of the whole process is very high. It could be in the range of 4000 meters per minute which in normal uh, textile processes you do not see such speeds, very high speeds and so it produces a type of a yarn which is interesting and uh, this also comes under the whole big umbrella of what we call as texturing. Then there is a category of yarn called high bulk yarns uh, which are used uh, also in daily life particularly in the winters uh, you get a lot of knitting yarns woolen or otherwise the synthetic material which we do which looks like woolen yarn is done through the high bulk process and so this also we will learn and we will spend some time also on other methods of texturing which we call as using solvent 
or any other chemical rather than only a dry heat or air jet which is mechanical. So, this is a course content in brief. So, uh, the introduction to texturing is the lecture that we are doing today. So, we spend some time to understand whatever it means and later on we will develop on these things. So, what do we want to learn in this? The terminology as to when we say texturing whatever it means. We may learn the definition of a process itself. Why do we do this? All this what is need, what is the need and that is what we may like to point out. The advantages, applications, some of the applications that we have and hopefully we should be able to finish something called a broad classification of textured yarns. From there onwards we will pick up individual processes and work on them. The terminology, different people at different times have been using different words to refer to the same process called texturizing. So, people have been using this word texturizing, some people have also been using word like texturization and we are in this course calling it texturing. All of them mean same, the same. So, different people can at different time use this term, but you must not get confused that all these terms are similar terms, actually same, meaning the same process. People who have been working in this industry uh, sometimes are called thrusters. Thruster was a, is a person who used to do the spinning of silk yarns. You know. Silk were, is the one natural material which is long filament yarns. Before this, uh, people all, all other natural fibers are staple short length material but uh, silk is along and then when the man-made fibers were made, synthetic fibers were made, so you had filament yarns. So, the term sometimes is used as thrusters. Thrusters, it may have the spelling of the kind. But we may not uh, use this word often and texturizer could be one word which may be used, texturizing industry or texturing industry could be the industry that we will be talking about. So, if you look at a classical definition when in the beginning when first synthetic fiber actually was made and somebody really wanted to uh, see what exactly is happening, so they call this is a process, texturing is a process. Hmm? Texturing is a process by which luxurious bulk, loft, stretch are introduced in an otherwise flat filament yarn. So, if you know all man-made fibers are generally circular, not exactly like some of these things are not really circular, but they are really flat and so the surface characteristics are different. Synthetic fibers like polyester and nylon are obviously uh, based on their hydrophilicity, hydrophobicity. They attach some water molecules, they attach less water molecules, but they are generally flat and the flat surfaces were considered not so nice, particularly in the garment applications, apparel applications and uh, when initially these filaments came into the market like the nylon 66 was the first filament to synthetic filament to come in the market. While the people were excited about the new material, they found that the water, water absorption capacities, water retention capacities, water absorption capacities were not so good and therefore, they, something had to be done and therefore, this particular thing which we call as uh, texturing. So, 
It is a process by which luxurious bulk, loft and stretch are introduced in an otherwise flat filament. So, filaments are flat and you try to introduce, well roughly projecting as if there are parallel bundle of filaments called the flat filament yarn and you do something geometrically modify their structures by some means. And what would happen therefore, that the structure that you see, if you can pull it, it can be pulled and then you leave it, it can come back. So, if we go back, what we wanted to say is, so you are looking at something called bulk, you are looking at something called stretch and what type of a material that you have is flat filament yarn and you want to change the flat filament yarn in some way so that you can get bulk and you can get stretch, all right. So, these are the things which we want to introduce and this is our raw material and this is the process. So, if we look at the structure as I said roughly a flat filament yarn and a textured filament yarn may be looking different. So, stretch can be obtained only if you have crimps, loops, crinkles which can be easily opened and you should do something so that they come back also and if they just extend and do not come back it is not a good product. So, this is what somebody thought would be interesting as long as we are able to complete the process. So, what kind of thing can we do? We should be able to, we can do things like this, a filament instead of remaining a straight filament, you can make it give some kind of crimp, you can make structures of this type which are helical in nature and not flat. You may be able to introduce loops of this kind and then if you stretch any one of these, they will extend and when they extend, you will feel that the material at a very low stress has become very long. You can also have situation where these may filaments if there are more, they may get entangled, you may like this, there are more filaments, they may get entangled. You may not want them to entangle, you may want it to be entangled. So, one is that there is a flat filament and you want to change its character as a final product, either by introducing loops or by introducing helical structure or by some kind of crimps, all of them are possible and people are using them. If you look at the history, like we started when the filament yarns were made and therefore there is a definition and you want to actually have you know change the structure, geometrical structure, but much before the advent of a synthetic yarn like nylons and polyester, people have been using something of this type where some bulk could be achieved and stretch may be there. And so, the first yarn that we talked about was the yarn which we call as the Lestex. This is in a way a trade name which was also coined at that time, which is a rubber code structure. So, in the center you have rubber, all around you have fil fibers, could be wool, could be cotton and so they were called sheath core yarns and these yarns are used till today. So, you are making sheath core yarns even today in all kinds of corsetry applications where the garment has to tightly snug the body, some of these things could be still used. The next one uh, for example, is the 
Heberlin process. This was also in 1930s. So, if you remember that the first synthetic fiber came much later. So, even in 1930s, the viscose multifilament and viscose processes were developed. So, you were calling them artificial silk in the beginning. And because of this, this particular Heberlin process was designed to give stretch in a viscose frontifilament yarn and process was very simple. They would twist the yarn and take it to this for steaming like you make a twisted package, take the package in autoclave in a steam for some time, come back, untwist it and they found that there is some bulk and stretch gets developed in a viscose filament yarn. Obviously, there were problems. When you wetted this type of material, you find well some things have been lost because no permanency was there in the structure, but it was principle was there. If we look at the other process which is cotton, cotton is just like viscose, but is always spun yarn. This is not filament yarn, but say can spun yarns also be handled? So, yeah, we can handle spun yarns also, but they were using then chemical. So, whatever they learned from the viscose process, they could utilize on the cotton type of yarns and viscose staple yarn as well and use chemistry like cross linking and then you can get a textured yarn which could stretch and come back. And so, what I wanted to say is that the modern day texturing which we will be studying had a history that so many processes were developed before that also. Although the main industrial use started you know with real effect when you had uh, the synthetic multifilament yarns coming to play. So, the modern day texturing uses some of these principles also which they were using. So, what do we have today other than multifilament yarn? You can have monofilament yarns which can also be texturized, change the geometrical shape and structure. You can have spun yarns like the cotton viscose spun yarns, could be polyester spun yarn also. Why would do, why would not do that will be a question that we will talk about later whenever we come to that point. And the moment you say there is spun yarn possibility, then obviously there is a possibility of blends also. You can have blended material that can also be done. And there are some other names that we see uh, the type of fibers called profile fibers. That means they are not circular, they are designed not to be circular or hollow fiber that we know there are some different applications. But what we are looking at the hollow fiber also has more bulk, you know, specific volume per unit mass, specific volume per unit mass of a hollow fiber is also large and so you say bulk is high. So, a fiber like this, trilobal, they are available. When you pack them in any manner, they take more space and so they can be bulky and they are called the profile material. So, you have different profile, trilobal, pentalobal or you can have these profiles and you can put the hole through it or you may have simple hollow fibers. So, that way people have been working around to keep increasing the specific volume in one way or the other. And so, today the classical definition which we said was introducing loft stretch in an otherwise flat filament may not be uh, applicable as such. So, it may be a process where definitely bulk is going to be increased, right. So, bulk will be increased. So, we talk about bulk. So, bulk is there, but they can be flat filaments or spun yarns and also they may not have stretch. So, you can have application where a lot of bulk has been developed, but they do not stretch. Now, let me just give just one uh, small thing. The stretch is different than the elongation of a fiber 
elongation at break of any fiber or filament. The elongation at break of textile grade fiber filaments is about 25 to 30 percent, 35 percent. But when we talk about stretch, we are talking about 300 percent, 400 percent stretch. Like you see the elastomeric yarn like rubber or lycra, all of them extend quite a lot. So, we may have requirement of a stretch or we may not and therefore, you may have technology which will not give you any stretch as well. So, uh, why do we do texturing? Partly we understood that we may not like uh, flat filament and therefore, we want thing because we are generally used to spun yarns before that whose surface is not so smooth, they always rough surfaces, adsorption capacity of the kind of material that we use are different and so people wanted this may be one of the ways in which you could get a material. Let us see the advantages, higher bulk, so like we have seen, so you have crimps, loops together, so the overall space that they occupy is going to be high and so definitely they will have a higher bulk. So, wherever we believe higher bulk is a good idea, you will definitely like to have these type of material and so this is one of the properties that we will definitely see, that is part of the definition itself. Greater moisture sorption, right and we are not talking about absorption, we are talking about sorption, all right. Maybe it is on the surface between the interstices, wherever there is a space, the water can stay there. That is the kind of property which uh, rough surfaces may have, you know, or porous surfaces may have, or surfaces where there are capillaries they may have, but flat filaments do not have. And therefore, if we look at that as a part of a thing, then the absorption, adsorption of the moisture could become very important. Think of a person where he is sweating and the sweat is dripping down the whole body, the type of feel that you have versus it gets adsorbed somewhere and does not drip down. So, that is an interesting uh, part. Warmth in the textile thing that we already know is because of the air entrapped. So, thermal conductivity of a fiber has much less to do with the warmth than the air entrapment. And so, when you make structures which are bulky of this type, they obviously they entrap a lot of air. So, you will generally have a warmer feeling if everything is all right. No, no, you can always argue that if wind is flowing at a very fast speed, then obviously it can penetrate and do the chilling effect also. But if it is cold as such, you may not, you may feel little warm like the way you look at a, any woolen garments. Permeability, yes of course, permeability to moisture if because as you are you know working, talking, doing whatever, you are producing moisture and heat. So, this will come out, so you will feel more comfortable. So, comfort levels always increase when the heat is not retained, moisture is not retained. So, that is the microclimate of a garment ensures if these type of material are there, although you will feel little warm everything is, but if there is a potential which is higher on the other side, it will just pass through because you are better cover, yeah it would appear from the same mass, you are covering more because bulkier, thicker type of material and so you would get this as well. Shape retention in many cases as we have said already that if you do some change, we want retraction also after extension and that means something you would do to the structure so that it would come back and so shape retention is going to be better which anyway whenever you do heat setting would happen in a synthetic material also. So, particularly material which will have good amount of stretch, they can hug the body and if people are interested in type of garments which hug the body, then obviously material which has some stretch is the one which is going to be preferred. 
whether it's active wear in a sports or otherwise underwear, undergarments and so on and so forth, you socks for that matter, you would like the material to stretch. So, and come and hold the body contours and, and therefore, uh, you would require. So, in such cases, you may require stretch as well. So, your definition does not say that it should not, there is the stretch garments are not or stretch yarn is not part of the texturing, it is part, but it is not necessarily it must be there, that is the only thing. But if you want such type of material, you will have to have uh, stretchability introduced also. This also is uh, an interesting thing because they are ready made garments all the time, ready made systems all the time. Any material which stretches easily and comes back to the position, you know size is called free size. If you have a trouser which is woven, then you have you know 28, 30, 32, 34, 36 sizes everywhere. You have got to stock all of them, the lengths also, but things which actually stretch and snugly fit or otherwise attract, you say well we do not have to have so many sizes to be stocked for today. Well, this some people may consider it advantage, some will say it is hardly an advantage, but it does not matter. So, these type of materials are going to pr provide this also. So, where would you like to use them? If, if you already know that the knitting, knitted garments have more flexibility compared to woven, so that anyway is there. So, these textured yarns which could be made from any process, it could be sheath core type of a process, it could be falstice as we have described sometimes where you can generate some texture in each filament yarn or you can have a process where entanglement has been done by some air jet texturing mechanisms or nozzles and so all of them can be used for knitted uh, garments like your socks for that matter or your blouses for that matter. All material which obviously you want them to fit snugly, you may want that knitted uh, knitting process be used and you get undergarments, tights, slacks, socks, sportswear, outerwear they will be generally knitted and also would have maybe textured yarns also. So, that is the kind of application which we generally would be looking at. Weaving methods like also are used like shirt you may want uh, that it also is bulky and more comfortable, but it may not be fitting snugly to the body. We want certain shape to be given, you want certain drape to be obtained which is different than a knitted garment. So, you may like to have woven processes as well and when you have woven processes, then they do help in quite a lot for that matter. You can have a dress material made, shirts, trousers, any other dress material, suiting, shirtings like you would be, uh, this, this type of material you do not want it to be, you know, hugging the body. but it will still have bulk retention, tapes, ribbons and so on and so forth, uh, these kind of things also can be there and made from the textured yarn. Some of the other uh, processes uh, or products which the textured yarn may be uh, useful, rugs and carpets, you see the carpet has a pile right and the piles most important thing is that it compresses so you feel comfort when you walk away the pile must come back to its own position so this pile yarn could be made from a textured yarn earlier you said you had you may have seen uh, people selling carpets made from wool or carpet made from silk. If you have seen carpets made from silk, they are there because you just like the silk and maybe the design which has been there, but they do not have pile 
and they don't give the kind of feeling of resilient or resiliency of the fibers. So, if you are looking for resilient fibers, then you would need a pile which can get easily compressed and which can recover from there. So, woolen carpets were there because of the structure the wool fibers had, you know, you have a natural crimp in the wool fiber and therefore, although we are not looking at the stretch, but it has compressibility which is uh, useful and then it can recover after compression. So, these days you can have nylon carpets for example, they may be made from textured yarn. You may have polypropylene carpets which may be from textured yarn, one can make from polyester as well. So, there is interesting process which we have not studied, but we did talk about in the bulk continuous filament as a one of the methods. Uh, these type of process, this process particularly is good for making pile yarn for rugs and carpets. So, depending upon and it is so it's a very fast process and therefore, is cheaper as well. So, finally, uh, it comes. Filter fabrics because you can actually create structures uh, which can entrap particles. So, if you have only woven or knitted, so you have a hole very right in front, but if fibers are moving all around, so it gives you a resistance to the transfer. So, if, if you are filtering something from one side to the other and if there are particles, dust particles or other things. So, as they move, if, if they get, they strike something, they have a tendency not to pass through, but stay there. And then if you understand the whole uh, filtration process, the particles keep attaching to the surfaces and then a cake formation may take place and then the efficiency of filtration also increases. But initially, the, the particles do strike and if you have structures which in a way give you uh, the obstruction to the direct motion versus you have squares where there is a hole in front. So, there is obstruction, the particle can stay. So, various methods can be used for textured fabric, filter fabrics can also be around. Then we have uh, other special application medical hygiene products, Avidai, napkin, shoe uppers, you know. So, some of the concepts changed as we developed these products. Earlier, we always felt what is the garment next to our body? The next to the body, the garment is called hydrophilic material, generally cotton. But that was because it was able to sob and absorb moisture. But today, we do not feel that. Today, we do not think that is the best idea. The better idea for a comfort is that the moisture does not get absorbed or material which is next to skin does not absorb the moisture, it transmits the moisture. And therefore, hydrophilic material are not necessarily the best material for comfort. You can think of somebody like a marathon runner running for 42 kilometers nod, the kind of moisture that he loses in that period of time from all of the body including the shoes that you wear. And if the shoes were not breathing, you could actually be, you could be running almost in a puddle, There's so much moisture would get collected. So, these materials, transmission of moisture becomes more important rather the absorption. So, the more you transmit, the more comfort levels uh, you have. So, some of the products which we were talking about uh, like the ever dry nappies, uh, hygiene products and shoe uppers actually use this type of a principle as well. So, generally for comfort point of view and the hygiene point of view, a product which we call as an ever dry nappy, the material which is next to skin is absolutely hydrophobic and you could actually have polypropylene textured material as a fabric, fabric made from 
polypropylene textured material. I said polypropylene because it is supposed to have zero moisture regain. So, and you still may feel more comfortable because this would transmit, does not like water, moisture it will trans transmit as quickly as possible depending upon the potential difference. So, it will immediately transfer. The moment it transfers, then you design the product which can absorb the moisture. And also you can have uh, the, the final layer which is impervious layer so that it does not go out. So, you have three layered structures generally in which one of the layer is next to skin which would immediately transfer the moisture. Then you would have a material which will be able to absorb the moisture then you can have impermeable impervious layer which would not permeate at all. So, keep it there and then till, till a change takes place. So, the concept of comfort change now you see the sports people in, in the humid conditions none of them are wearing a cotton t-shirt you know it is a stretchable garment which is could be polyester which does not like the moisture so much transmits out. So, you actually feel more dry as you are doing lot of athletic exercises. So, textured yarn therefore, has a good amount of application in such type of materials as well. The So, which type of a textured yarn that will depend on what kind of product that you want to make. So, if you look at some of the things, we say we have textured yarn without saying how they have been made, they have just been divided into three broad categories. And these three broad categories as you can see are stretch yarn. So, obviously, the name suggests they stretch, they stretch quite a lot. They can stretch 300 to 400 percent. So, what happens? You know, what do you get out of this? What we get out of this is, let me make it here itself. So, you have stress strain curve if you want to draw. A normal textile fiber may look like this. So, the moment you put any stress it extends, but you see this region where the stress develops right. The stress develops here ok, the stress develops. But if you look at a stretch yarn and do the same kind of an exercise in that, it may keep extending my space is gone, but what it means is they will keep extending at what? Very low stress value. Very low stress, what means? If your normal fiber breaks at something like 3 to 4 grams per linear kind of a tenacity. So, we are talking about 0 0.1 gram, 0 0.1 gram if you put as a tenacity grams per linear, it will be extended to 300 percent, 400 percent. So, when you talk about comfort, this becomes an important part. So, somebody is jumping, somebody is running, how much extension at the knee you have let us say 40 percent, 50 percent extension when you bend, if you do this there is an extension here. So, if this material extends the way you extend and it can go 300, 400 percent, then the stress developed for a 50 percent or 60 percent extension will be hardly anything. That means, you will not even feel that there is, there is a fabric which is trying to resist the motion. So, this is what was uh, the important thing as far as the stretch yarns are concerned. So, when you talk about stretch yarns, so all type of garment that you would like to make where you want 
the, it should stretch along the stretch in the body that is snugly fitting, then you would like to make use of stretch yarns. So, all such yarns which will be actually extending to such extents are going to be in the category of stretch yarn. So, there will be some methods by which we can produce a stretch yarn. So, definitely they will also have bulk. So, people say well yes, it is not just the stretch, there is bulk also. So, bulk will also be increasing, but when you stretch obviously bulk will go down. After all, let us say this is the kind of a area, cross sectional area in which large number of fiber filaments are there which are occupying this space, you pull they will become thin, but you leave them they will have to come. So, depending upon the construction of the material, this whole process of extension and recovery uh, you will have to design. So, knitting these type of material also is difficult, difficult in the sense that when you weave you, you there is a tension, when you knit there is a tension. So, you should know how to control the tension during preparation of the fabrics and garments, because if you put any amount of tension which is different from one yarn to the other, you can generate a fault, because some of them have extended more, the others have extended less. So, you have to make sure that all of them are extended to the same extent that the tension level controls up. So, therefore, preparation making garments is going to be making fabrics is going to be more challenging when you use a textured material, but after you have made the comfort levels are going to be high. The next one, before I do the next one, let's do the last one. Last one is a category called bulk yarns. So, they have enough bulk, very high bulk compared to if you had not done this process. So, they have high bulk, but they do not stretch. So, why do you make them? That all such application where we do not require too much of a stretch or we do not require any stretch then we would require. For example, uh, some of the yarns, even cotton spun yarn for example, is used for knitted garments, it is they still look good, right. So, you say ki, well I will increase the bulk by any other method and I do not have to use because my final technology for the garment manufacturing let us say is knitting. So, I do not need this type of material or any other product I can make. For example, a car upholstery, it requires when you have the upholstery which has bulk, it can soft moisture, it can transmit air from like you are sitting for 1 hour, half an hour, 15 minutes like this, you would want transfer of heat and moisture. So, this type of material will allow, it does not have to stretch at all. Once you have made whatever you have made, it stays there, you do not require stretch. So, all such application will require a lot of bulk, but you do not require stretch, you will have bulk dance. So, if I look at this, then the bulk yarn may actually look like this. While this may be a stretch yarn. Now, so there are applications which do not require any stretch, so you use such type of processes. Applications require large amount of stretch, you use the stretch yarns. In between there is something which has come, we call it a modified stretch yarn. So, the modified stretch yarn obviously has less stretch. So, because the process processes that have been used to produce uh, this type of a yarn actually first makes a stretch yarn and modifies the process later or the yarn later and therefore, and to reduce the stretch. And so, the term, the classification has come as a modified stretch yarn, but there is the possibility that you can produce this type of product without first making a stretch yarn and then modifying it. So, you can make a product without doing this process, directly some other technology can be used to make a process product which will have less stretch, right. Why do we require less stretch? Well, for example, my shirt I do not want 
every time somebody pulls, and I got 300 percent. But I may be interested in bulk. It gives me all those advantages which the bulk material should give, but I do not want stretch zone. Such type of an application, you may require the bulk which could be high or moderate, but stretch is reduced. How much reduced? If that one is going about 300 to 400 percent, this may be, may be 100 to 150 percent, it may stretch. So, it is not zero stretch, it is a reduced stretch. If we look at that, then maybe the modified stretch yarn also may behave like this, but has less stretch. So, you have all the three types can be represented approximately by a stress strain curve and based on your own requirement, you may use any of the technology and make a product and be happy. One thing which I can say, roughly any garment that we make out of multifilament yarns, most of them, most of those are from textured yarns you would not really find a shirt from multifilament yarn which has not been texturized or a knitted product made from multifilament polyester which is flat yarn. So, uh, because the comfort levels that means that this particular technology has become such an important part that all such products will go through this before they are used, right. It is just like when you make a synthetic yarn you must draw. If you make a synthetic yarn and use for any product, you must heat set. But if you want to have a synthetic yarn and also want to make garments out of it, so you should texturize also. So, texturizing therefore, has become an interesting important technology which must be used to make a useful product. So, we have seen some of the application which could be uh, through the woven route or a knitting route but definitely it is a interesting technology which we will be uh, dwelling upon for more time later. So, what have we learned today? We have learnt that there is some kind of a uh, classification, broad classification. We know the definition uh, of the material. We also uh, know what can come under the umbrella of the thing called textured yarn, all right. So, as far as uh, we are concerned for today, we are done. Next time when we meet, we will pick up all these topics and so uh, all the best. See you.